Hey guys, welcome back. We are here in the basement again. We just finished up the setup of the governor and fan shaft uh, with both the backlash, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, contact pattern and all that stuff. And I did not get any of that on video except for measuring the backlash because quite simply, I spent probably four to six hours adding shims, taking away shims, adding washers, taking away washers, adjusting the nuts for the shaft and doing all of that stuff. It, it was really a tedious process, but I'm gonna kind of describe it and streamline it for you guys so that you have an idea of kind of the process involved. So hopefully I don't run out of battery. <laughs> but here we are on the bench and let me start by saying that if you guys are going to use John Deere shim packs for um, both the governor shaft and the fan shaft, I would probably order 10 thick and 10 thin because you will use most of them. Um, and they're all interchangeable between the governor shaft, the fan shaft, all of that is all the same. So let's jump right into it. Um, the first thing I did was I wanted to get the heel of the gears lined up, which comes from this area here. The, the bevel gear and the pinion gear on the fan shaft. The heel is, here let's see if I can, see if I can make a mess here with, with light. But if you guys can see the screwdriver in here, the heel is the back side bevel of the portion of this gear in comparison to the back side bevel of the pinion gear. That angle between those two should be about flush. So if you can see the angle of the screwdriver here, it matches the angle on the bevel gear as well as the angle on the fan shaft pinion gear. So that's what it should look like when it's set correctly as far as depth goes on the bevel gear in comparison to the pinion gear. So from there we have to we have to look at our contact pattern and backlash. So the way I did it was getting the shim pack set up appropriately. I have on the magneto side I have three thick, two thin, and I also have a homemade thick shim because I ran out. So what I did was I went to Walmart and picked up some of that paper poster board, tag board, whatever you want to call it. I picked some of that up because it's probably about the same thickness as the thick shim. And I made one extra shim out of that for the magneto side. On the flywheel side, I have one thin shim excuse me, one thin shim behind this carrier, and then the fan shaft has one thick shim. And that got everything almost where it needs to be. Where I ran into an issue was I could not get any more adjustment because you can use the, the capture nuts on either end of this shaft to kind of position the shaft a little bit from side to side so that you get a little bit of fine tuning with those. But I could not get enough. So what I had to do, um, if you guys can see down between here, you won't be able to see the fix, but this was recommended to me by Brian Patterson. He's a friend of mine that has a 26 John Deere D or late 26, early 27 D. And he had mentioned that I might have to install a shim washer between the driven gear and the bearing on the inside of here, of this carrier. So I actually had to install a thick washer and a thin washer between that driven gear and the bearing. And that was able, that allowed me to get the, the entire shaft towards the magneto side enough 
to take up the backlash that I had. I had a lot of excess backlash. So it, it didn't seem to matter how many shims I tried, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't pull it far enough over. So I actually had to shim the whole shaft over. So that got our backlash in almost within tolerance and then another round of fine tuning with the capture nuts on either end of the shaft to get it really dialed in. But the backlash that it calls for is 0 0.004 to 0 0.007. And I'm at 0 0.0075, so I'm going to leave it there. That's I'm not willing to go any tighter than that. It doesn't need to be. These things turn at only a couple hundred RPM. Max RPM of the engine is 800, and this is probably turning much, much slower than that. So I'm not too worried about an extra five, ten thousandths of an inch. So... Yeah, that's where we're at. So the governor is pretty much set up and ready to go. Oh, wait, we got to talk about contact pattern. <laughs> so let's move this again over here. Whoa, don't drop your dial indicator. Turn this down. I don't think you guys will be able to see. Yeah, the paint is too, too bright and the gear is too bright. But if I dim that light down a little bit, so basically your contact pattern, looking at the teeth here, you can kind of see a dark spot here, but it's really, if you look without the camera, you can see this whole area has contact pattern from about the first, if you come in from the leading inside edge, about an eighth of an inch, that's where the contact pattern starts, goes into the tooth about two thirds of the way, and then comes consistently to about the last eighth inch of the tooth, and then back out to the leading edge. So this whole area has good contact, which is exactly what we want to see. So I've got, what I used for that, instead of getting some grease or Prussian, Prussian grease or bluing compound, I just grabbed a white paint marker that they would use for writing on tires, because it's an oil-based paint and I just painted the teeth with the paint marker and that really worked well. So uh, about the only complaint I would have is I'd like something a little bit thicker. So maybe two or three coats with that paint marker would be better than just one. That way you could really see the paint wear on it. But I can see it with my naked eye, but with the camera, it really doesn't show up that well. So backlash is good. Contact pattern is good. And that's that. So about the only other thing to look at is the front end of the water pipe here. And it's set up very similar to uh, the felt system and steel cup retainers for the, the rear section of the fan shaft, as well as both ends of the governor. And essentially how it's situated is there's a steel cup in the rear portion here that holds a felt and the cup is open-ended towards the rear of the fan shaft. That gets kind of driven in place. The easiest way to do that is put the, the felt inside the cup and then drive the cup into the front of the fan shaft um, support here. Then you'll have your bearing that goes inside the casting here. And then this cap or this retainer also has a steel cup and felt. So I installed the felt inside the steel cup because this again has the cup towards the rear and then you can install the cap over the front of the bearing here. But one thing I want to note is there is a steel spacer that goes inside that, that uh, retainer. And the easiest way to put that in is prior to putting the cap on, put this in place because this actually this spacer is meant to go up against the bearing on the front side and then it takes up the extra room between the fan shaft which is a smaller diameter than the opening of the felt so that kind of takes up that difference I put a small amount of grease in there and then from there 
the way it's set up is you've got a thick washer that goes on as a spacer. You've got your spring. You've got your drive disc. Then you'll have a clutch disc itself that goes on. Then your fan. Then another clutch disc. Then your other drive disc. And then a flat washer, a nut with a cotter pin goes on the front. And that is pretty much it. And we cannot do this portion yet because I ordered some new drive discs, but unfortunately they came with the center hole sized to the incorrect size. So unfortunately we can't install the fan as of yet. But if, if we did have those, this could all be put together and just set aside. Um, yeah, that would be... That would be done done, but right now, this is as far as we're going to get. So that's all I've got for the governor and the water pipe. And uh, if anybody has a good way to get rust and scale out of the inside of this water pipe, let me know. I thought about trying to sandblast inside here, but the challenge is this opening for the fan shaft passes right through the middle of the water pipe so you've got passages on both sides and I don't know the best way to get down inside here to clean that out because I've got still quite a bit of scale inside here that I'd like to get out and ideally I'd like to put Glyptol inside there but I don't think that's <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen we'll see but about the only way you could would be to make a block off plate for the top make a block off plate for the bottom and then pour Glyptol inside there and swish it around back and forth until you've got a good even coating and dump out whatever excess. And Glyptol isn't cheap and I don't really want to just waste it. So I'm not really sure what to do with that. But moving on from here, I think what we're going to do is we're going to start working on the clutch for the tractor. Uh, I've got the 27 and the 28 clutch pulleys down here as well as the clutch fork assembly that's currently stuck so we got to get that freed up and get it apart get everything cleaned up blasted where it needs to be and then coat the inside of that fork carrier with gliptol um, the clutches uh, we're <laughs> our best is going to be trying to make in two or one good one out of two setups and I'm not sure which one is going to be the best one to pick, but we'll give our give it our best shot. So that's where we're at. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope I hope this was descriptive enough for everybody. But these governors are just they're a lot different than an A B G governor setup. So they're very similar to a G P, but um, they they do have some differences. So. That's all we've got. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Thanks for wrenching with me. And we'll see you in the next one. Take care, y'all.